We'd like to welcome you uh, to our online service. Uh, we certainly realize this is not uh, ideal. Uh, this is not uh, the, the way we want uh, to meet. Uh, we would prefer uh, to have our church all together and uh, sitting in the pews. Uh, but given the uh, state of affairs, we felt this was the safest, most effective way uh, to meet. And uh, so... As we begin, we're going to bow our heads uh, and have a word of prayer. Our Father, we're thankful for the opportunity uh, to gather in thy name. Father, we pray for each listener, each watcher, Lord, that the Spirit of God would do what we cannot, and that's feed and comfort and bless thy people. Father, we're grateful for the folks of Landmark Baptist Church and all of those folks who are tuning in. And Father, our prayer is you would speak to their heart and use this uh, to make your people better and you would use it for your honor and for your glory. I pray you'd bless everything that goes on. I pray you would see the, would receive the preeminence in all things. And whatever you do for us, Father, we'll certainly thank you and we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, again, we certainly want to welcome you and uh, we are aware that video is not the ideal format uh, to feed the people of God. Uh, I am grateful and thankful for the technology that we have, and at least we can have some semblance of church. We will be uh, providing videos to our YouTube channel, uh, our Landmark Baptist Church YouTube channel, and uh, our plan is to record these videos, upload them to YouTube, then we will share uh, the link to uh, these particular videos on our Facebook page. Uh, we also are making these uh, services available uh, on CD. For those who are older or are not familiar with the internet, we do have CDs available. Please uh, contact me or Brother Aaron or Brother Stephen or Brother Curtis, and uh, we will make sure that we get you a CD uh, of these services, uh, of the singing and the preaching. Now, uh, it is obvious that we have had to modify our services uh, given the, service, given the uh, situation we find ourselves in. And so our prayer is that you'll bear with us and pray for us uh, as a church, uh, as a pastor, uh, and, and, and for our community, uh, that we can get things restored to normal as quickly as possible. All right. Now, uh, this evening, we're going to have uh, some singing. Uh, this is our Wednesday night prayer service, and uh, so we're going to continue on uh, and have some singing. And so it's good to have Brother Stephen Tapley and Miss Kayla Millspaw with us, and they're going to sing a couple of songs for you. And so we're going to turn them loose and let them sing. Our hope and prayer is these songs will be a blessing to you. All right? <laughs>
Amen. I uh, appreciate uh, our singers, and more importantly, I appreciate the Lord uh, being willing uh, to meet with us and uh, reveal himself to us uh, during these days. Uh, I have one more announcement uh, I would like to make. Our church is not only posting our Wednesday night service, uh, which is what this is, uh, we will also be posting uh, Sunday school lessons from our Sunday school teachers. Uh, Brother Aaron Millspa, who teaches our adult class, uh, we will have his Sunday school lesson up on our YouTube channel uh, Sunday morning. Uh, Brother Stephen Tapley, who teaches our young people and young adults, uh, his Sunday school lesson will also be up uh, on Sunday morning. And uh, so you, we're trying to, to give you as much uh, as we can uh, and as much as what you're used to. And so both those Sunday school lessons will be up. Uh, and of course, we will have our worship hour Sunday morning. And uh, so our hope and prayer is that you'll turn in, you will tune in to any and all services. Uh, now, uh, tonight, uh, if you're following along with us, I'd like you to take your Bible and turn to the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter number 20. 2 Chronicles, chapter number 20. And uh, as I was studying and preparing, uh, the Lord uh, gave me these verses, and I want to try to give them to you tonight. Second Chronicles chapter number 20, and we will begin reading in verse number 1. Second Chronicles chapter number 20 and verse number 1. The Bible says this, and it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria. And behold, they be in Hazon Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thine hand is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee? Art not thou our God who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel? And gavest it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend, forever. And they dwelt therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If, when evil cometh upon us, as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house, and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. And now, behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldst not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt. But they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. O our God, Wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. Let's pray. Our Father, we're grateful uh, for the opportunity, uh, Lord, to preach the Bible. Father, we do not take it lightly. And Lord, we uh, are uh, prayer. This evening is that you would use the message to comfort and help, settle and strengthen and bless your people. Father, our prayer is you would touch your unprofitable servant. You would anoint us with power from on high. Give us that which we so desperately need to preach. Pray the Spirit of God would come and anoint us and use us. 
for thy honor and thy glory. Father, whatever you do for us, we'll be careful to thank you and praise you and give you all the honor and all the glory for you're the only one worthy. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Here we find the children of Israel had a problem. According to verse number one, there are several uh, nations uh, that surround the land of Israel. And these nations are preparing to go to battle against Israel. We are told uh, who two of these nations are. Uh, they are the children of Moab and the children of Ammon. And then the Bible says this, and there were with them others beside. I believe it's a safe bet to say that there was a multitude who were coming against the children of Israel to make war with them. Now, obviously, in, in this situation, the children of Israel were distressed. They're worried. They're scared. It's evidenced in the text. They're concerned about their safety. They're concerned about their future. They're concerned about their way of life. They are concerned about their economy and their ability to make a living. They are concerned about their children. They are concerned about the elderly. For the children of Israel, these days are days of uncertainty. These days are days of perplexity. These are days of confusion. And unfortunately, the day and hour we find ourselves in, uh, we are in the same condition. We are living in unprecedented times. We are seeing things come to pass in our days that we have never seen before. Uh, churches are closing. People are sick and some are even dying. We are seeing people panic and we are seeing the worst of humanity. People are hoarding toilet paper and hand sanitizer. Uh, we are certainly seeing government overreach and a loss of our freedoms. We are seeing blame passed around from the Democrats to the White House to China. We are seeing conspiracy theories running wild. And those who push such theories are having a field day. Now, as you talk to people, you'll get a vast array of what they think we ought to do, and how they think things should be handled. And these opinions run the gamut. And some are saying it's no big deal, it's all a hoax. And while others are sheltering in place, scared to death to leave their homes, while others are genuinely concerned but trying to use some common sense. Now in these times, we are certainly seeing a lack of things. We are seeing a lack of common sense. Right. We are seeing a lack of compassion. But one thing we are not seeing a shortage of, and that is opinions. Uh, some advocate a complete and total shutdown and a forced quarantine. While others say we should ignore all the warning signs and all the recommendations and just live a normal life. Friend, these days certainly qualify as days of uncertainty, days of confusion, days of perplexity, much like the days we just read about in the text for the children of Israel. And tonight, I would like you, I would like you to notice verse number 12. It will be my text tonight, and I want to try to use it uh, and preach the message the Lord's laid upon my heart. Uh, verse number 12. O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Here it is. This is the text. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. I'd like to focus on that little phrase. Neither know we what to do. The children of Israel find themselves in a position where they were uncertain of the next step to take. They were unsettled on the direction they should go. And tonight, if we're really going to be honest and get the help that we need from the Lord, uh, it will begin by us humbling ourselves and saying, we really don't know what to do. And we'll have to, uh, to admit that we don't have all the answers. Right. Much like the king in our text, he comes clean with the Lord and says, Lord, I do not know the best course of action. Lord, I do not know how to handle this situation. And I will be honest with you this evening. This is my first pandemic. I've never pastored through one before. 
And there are no preachers alive today who have ever pastored through a situation exactly like this one. So this is all new ground to every pastor. Now there are some that are choosing to continue to meet and have service. There are others who have canceled every service. My response is this to every pastor. You have a responsibility to do as you are led by the Lord. If you're choosing to have church, that is between you and the Lord. If you are choosing to cancel services, that is between you and the Lord. But may I say this, preacher, I am for you. Uh, do what the Lord tells you to do. I am not against you regardless of your decision that you've made. Mm, and the reason I make reference to that is simply to make a point. There are no clear-cut answers. Some say continue to have church. Some say cancel church. And some say we ought to abide uh, by the government's request to shelter in place. While others are saying the government is not going to dictate to me whether I can have church or not. And they're saying the government's trying to control my church. And the reason, uh, if the answers were clear, we would certainly all be doing the same thing. Uh, we would all be lockstep and we would all be doing the exact, uh, following all the exact procedures. Um, but the reason we're not all in the same, same uh, lockstep together is because uh, the issue is not cut and dry. So we find ourselves tonight in a similar position as the people in the text. People are concerned about their future. People are concerned about their children. People are concerned about the economy and the, their ability to make a living. We find ourselves in days of uncertainty and perplexity and confusion. And tonight I want to use this text and, and try to preach on this thought. What to do when you don't know what to do. What to do when you don't know what to do. Tonight, I want to kind of give you, try to give you three or four things to do when you find yourself in a position of not knowing what to do. Now, the current state of affairs certainly uh, qualifies and falls into this category. But even after this is passed and things are returned to normal, there's going to be times in your life right. that have nothing to do with the coronavirus where you just don't know what to do. Oh, yeah. It may be when you have, it may be dealing with your children. It may be how to hand, handle a marital problem. It may be a financial decision. But there's going to be times in this life where you don't know what to do. The question becomes, what do we do when we don't know what to do? And tonight I want to try to deal with that subject and just try to give you a few things that will help you during these times. I'd like to say, first of all, stay focused. Stay focused. In our text, we find that war is imminent in Israel. The battle is coming. There's no doubt people are concerned and they are scared and they are worried. They are concerned for their safety and their welfare. There is an uncertainty uh, to the situation. I believe the, the perplexity is so thick you could cut it with a knife. And there is no doubt this caused many tears and many sleepless nights. And there's no doubt there is opinions flying around from everyone, from the least to the greatest. But I want you to notice what the king says in verse number 12. Uh, I won't read the entire verse for time's sake, but notice the last part of the verse. He said, neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. You know what he's saying? Lord, we are looking at you. We're focusing on you. Amen. And tonight, in this time of despair, uh, the king says, our eyes are upon you, Lord. He's saying, during our difficulties, we will not focus on our problems. We will not focus on what could happen or what might happen. But we are making a choice consciously making a decision to stay focused on you. Amen. Now, whether it be our current situation or a personal situation, this advice is solid advice. Now, stay focused on the Lord during these dark days. You'd be wise to keep your eyes on Jesus. You certainly cannot trust the news media but to be a provider of peace and direction and guidance during these days. You certainly cannot trust the internet as a reliable source of information. But I promise you, 
you tonight. If you'll fix your eyes on Jesus, He will never lead you astray. He will never lead you wrong. He will provide the peace and comfort that you so long for. Corey Ten Boom said this. If you look at the world, you'll be distressed. If you look within, you'll be depressed. But if you look at God, you'll be at rest. God did not promise us peace from our external circumstances. However, he does promise us peace in him. In John 14, 27, this is what our Savior said. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And hear me tonight, uh, if you're going to have peace during uncertainties, whether it be this or any other uncertainty in your life, you must turn your eyes upon Jesus. Uh, and I promise you, He will provide the peace and the direction and the comfort you're longing for in days of uncertainty, in days of nervousness and fear, and, and not knowing what's going to happen. I promise you, uh, there is a God in heaven who has not surrendered His authority. He's still on the throne and he's still in charge and he knows what's going on and he knows where you are and he knows what you need is I promise you it would do you good just to stay focused on Jesus Amen. he said this in John 16 33 and these things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace in the world you shall have tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome Amen the world. Yeah. And tonight, why it seems our world is turned upside down, it seems our society has gone off the deep end. I promise you, none of this caught God off, off, off guard. None of this surprised him. And child of God, tonight, I promise you, if you'll stay focused on the Savior, uh, everything will turn out right. You hear me, uh, uh, Peter was walking on water and as long as he kept his eyes focused on Jesus, uh, he continued to have supernatural victory. He continued to do the impossible and accomplish the improbable. But the moment he took his eyes off the Savior, the Bible says he began to sink. Hear me, if you're going to make it through uh, uh, days of uncertainty and problems, uh, it will require you stay focused on the Savior tonight. John 20, 20, the Bible says this. And when he had so said, he shewed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Tonight, get your eyes off your problems. And get your eyes on the Savior. You got to stay focused. You got to stay focused. But number two, not only stay focused, you need to stay faithful. Regardless of situation or circumstance, we are to remain faithful. Amen. Let us remain faithful in reading of the scriptures. Do not get out of your Bible. Stay in your Bible. As a child of God, and as a Christian, as a pastor, as a preacher, as an evangelist, I have preached for many, many years. And one thing I have tried to hammer consistently in my church is read your Bible. Daily, read your Bible. Because when things like this arise and problems and days of uncertainty come, you have already gotten in the habit of reading your Bible. And if you're not careful, you will be knocked off your axis by different situations. And the devil will do everything he can to try to get you out of the Bible. But hear me tonight. Uh, the Bible... Uh, is going to help you stay rooted and grounded in the things of God. Psalm 119, 105 says this, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and it's a light unto my path. You realize that the Bible provides light for a darkened path. Yeah. It is a lamp for when things grow weary and dim, and you know not the direction you are to head and tonight, if you're going to find directions and, and you're going to find your way through uh, days of confusion and days of uncertainty, it will certainly require you to spend time in the Word of God. Now is not the time for you to forsake your Bible. It will prove itself to be the light that guides you safely through any adversity. It will illuminate the God that you serve. 
And it will serve as a reminder of his promises. Be faithful to read your Bible. It's a guide to see us through. May I say this? Be faithful to pray. In our text, when God's people were faced with uncertainty, when they were faced with days of perplexity, I want you to notice their response. I want you to notice that they found direction when they prayed. And tonight, if we're going to find ourselves on the sunny, bank, the sunny banks of deliverance, it will be because we obtain victory through prayer. Notice verse number 14. The Lord tells them what to do. And then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benai, the son of Jeel, the son of Mattaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye, all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou, King Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. What an encouraging, what an encouragement God gave them. And the reason they have this encouragement is because they prayed. And when they prayed, God provided exactly what they needed. He first reminds them that the battle is not theirs. He reminds them not to be dismayed, not to be perplexed, not to give in to uncertainty uh, and confusion. He's saying, I'm still on the throne, and I'm still in charge, and I'm still able uh, to take care of you. And he's saying, listen, the battle, uh, the issue you're facing is not yours to fix. It's mine to fix. And I want you to rest and, and have some confidence and faith in me. And they got that answer because they went and prayed. It provided peace. And you'll find in verse number 15 that the battle is not yours, but it's God's. He says this to calm their fears and to remind them that, they will take, that he will take care of them. He goes on this particular instance to tell them not to do anything. He says, be still and see the salvation of the Lord. Look at verse 17. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves. Stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. You will find that he tells them in this instance not to do anything. He tells them to stand still, that he's got it covered, that it's his battle, not your battle. May I remind you, child of God, this current situation we find ourselves in is not ours to fix. It is not ours to correct. It is not ours to straighten out. It is the Lord's. And the Lord knows what he's doing. And the Lord is more than capable to take care of this situation. He tells them that he will be with them. He says in the end of verse 17, for the Lord will be with you. He reminds them that his presence is still there. He reminds he's not bailed out on them. He reminds them that uh, he's still on the throne and he's still their God and he's not given up on them and he's not walked away from them and he's not left them to themselves. Uh, they, get this, they get this encouragement. They find this strength. Uh, they find this direction through prayer. Uh, and had they not prayed, they'd have never got this word from the Lord. Uh, but the, uh, the Lord gives them this. Uh, once they begin to pray, hear me tonight, you want direction, you want peace, you want assurance, uh, then be faithful to pray and trust the Lord and he will give you that which you need. Right. He reminds them that he's with them. He reminds them to do nothing. He gives them direction and instruction. He encourages them. What a message the Lord provides when they begin to pray. You want peace? You will find it in your prayer closet. May I say this, be faithful to serve even if it is in a limited capacity. The Bible says this about the woman who anoints Jesus and breaks the alabaster box and anoints the feet of the Savior. The Bible says this in Mark 14, 8. She hath done what she could. And tonight, that's what the Lord expects of you and I. Though our outreach may be limited, though our uh, abilities may have been curtailed, tonight, God just expects us to do what we can. And so tonight, still be a witness. Still try to reach others. Still try to be a blessing. Still try to serve and labor. Even if you feel like that labor is, is, is small and you feel like you can't 
and do the things you would typically do, still leave a track, still pray, still read your Bible, still serve in what capacity that you can. Just be faithful. Just be focused. But number three, not only do you need to stay focused and stay faithful, number three, you need to stay fed. I understand that watching a video is not the same as coming to church. I know that. I understand there's something different about gathering together with the saints of God and getting up and, and uh, Brother Aaron gets up and begins to lead the congregational singing and with one voice and in one accord we begin to sing the old songs of Zion. There's something special about that. Mm, there's something special about uh, gathering to get together on a Wednesday night and lifting your hand and making your prayer request known. Mm, there's something special about hearing uh, the songs live from the piano or from the guitar. There's something special about being in the house of God and hearing the message directly to you and allowing the Spirit of God to speak to you. I understand that completely. But I understand that given our current situation, we are doing the very best that we can to still try to help people and still try to be a blessing to the church of the living God. And during these times, we have an obligation uh, to do our best to stay fed. And what I mean by that is simply this. We'll be broadcasting our services on YouTube and posting links to our YouTube channel on Facebook. Watch them. Take some time. Turn the TV off. And, and, and get on your computer, your tablet, your phone and listen to the messages that God has prepared for you. Listen to the singing and, and keep yourself fed. Listen tonight. It may not be exactly what you want, but at least you can get something from the word of God. Amen. You have an obligation to stay fed. And listen, do your best to listen to preaching and singing. And listen, we'll broadcast Sunday school again with Brother Stephen and Brother Aaron will both be doing videos on their Sunday school lessons. We will be here preaching on, uh, 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 for Sunday morning. And, and listen, we're going to do our best to try to give you something the best that we can given, given our, our current situation. And listen, don't take it for granted. Don't, don't look at this as like a hall pass, uh, getting out of church and not having to go to church. Uh, look at it as an opportunity that God's given you. Had this happened 50, 60 years ago, we would not have this outreach. We would not have this ability. But God, in his grace and his mercy, has given us an opportunity that we can click on our phone or our tablet or our computer and we can still hear the word of God. We can still hear the songs of Zion. Uh, don't, don't be nonchalant about it. Make it a point to sit down and listen to preaching, listen to the singing. God's still giving me messages for our church. God's still uh, speaking to my heart about how to feed people the best we know how. And granted, I understand it may not be the diet that you wish, but thank God we don't have to starve to death. We can still stay fed if we'll do our due diligence and, and take some time and push everything else out. And we will focus on the Word of God and focus on the videos and focus on uh, uh, the, the singing. Uh, God can keep us fed. Understand these are days of uncertainty, but you got to stay fed. And hear me, I am not the only preacher on YouTube. There are other great men who are doing the exact same thing that I'm doing tonight. You do not have to limit yourself to just simply listening to me. There are other great men. I understand there's some nuts. I know that. But our church knows men who have been in and out of this church preaching for us through the years. Get on YouTube, find some of those men, listen to them as well, and keep yourself fed. Understand these are days of uncertainty. Understand there's a lot of confusion. But tonight, may we humble ourselves. If we are going to get through this thing, if we're going to see the Lord bring us through, and we're going to come through unscathed, It'll begin with us humbling ourselves and saying, Lord, we don't have all the answers. and We don't know what to do. And until you tell us exactly what to do, this is what we're going to do. Until we get the answers from heaven, we're going to stay focused on you. We're going to stay faithful to you. And we're going to stay fed by you. Tonight, 
Stay in your Bible. Stay on your faith. Stay close to the Lord. Stay fed. Focus on Him. Thank you for tuning in. We certainly appreciate it. God bless.